Hi, we're here. I'm Deanne Fitzpatrick. Welcome to Thursday Live at Deanne Fitzpatrick Studio. We're a rug hooking studio in Amherst, Nova Scotia, in the downtown, and now you can come visit. And soon, we hope our borders, our provincial borders, will be open soon, and that you'll be able to cross the border and come visit us. Uh, we've had some visitors this morning, didn't we, Angela? We did. Yeah. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was great. Yeah. I mean, we're not. We're almost not quite used to it now because, <laughs> but we welcome it. It's funny how we've gotten to the habit of. We've gotten to the habit of just uh, working with you online, and we're really happy to open our doors. So Thursday Live is about to begin, and today we are talking about... Uh, I'll just stick that up there. Maybe it'll fall on me, and that'll be interesting. Um, so today I've got a few things on the go for you. Um, I want to talk to you about how to transfer patterns and how to create patterns. Not so that you can copy other people's patterns. We don't do that. I mean, rug hookers are famous for... Rug hookers call me and say, uh, can I use that oftentimes, you know, like even if they just saw a little thing. They, the, their rug hookers are famous for being careful, about really being careful and respecting other people's copyright. So, uh, but I want you to, if you have permission to trace a pattern, like in our pattern books, which you do, I want to show you how to do that. I also want to talk about hooking people a little bit today and outlining people for the hooking. And um, and I'm started this rug, uh, which is in our pattern book, and it's called Kitchen Love. And it really, really, really reminds me of my mother's and my aunt's and the, my, my neighbor, Mrs. Edna, and the way they were in the kitchen um, growing up. So I still have a lot of those influences. But I'm really excited about getting into all of these patterns. I haven't hooked people for a while. These faces will be a little challenge, and usually I don't, usually I don't put in faces, but I think I might give them a little lipstick. Um, I got to tell you, though, like I'm off the lipstick. I put it on today, but I'm having such a trouble with my masks, right? I'm like, are you guys wearing lipstick, Lorna and Angela? I have lip gloss on. I never wear lipstick. Never wear lipstick? How about everybody else? Are they having trouble? Like, I get it all over everything. It seems like I'm, I'm always messing it up. So, like, I haven't worn it all week. I just put it on because you're coming over. So I'm happy that you're here. Uh, but what about you guys? Are you wearing lipstick or not? T tell us. And are, are you finding that since we've been wearing more masks that you're wearing less lipstick? You guys will have to tell me what everybody says. Um, I'm going to talk about the Wednesday workshop, and I'm going to show you a new product that we have, something pretty wonderful, uh, I think. You might even get a sneak peek if you're watching today before I show it. I'm going to show you my new rugs, the rug that we finished. So for the last uh, five weeks, I think we've been working on the Fundy Abstract rug, and I'd like to show you that. And um, that's, that's about it for today, I think, isn't it? <laughs> Joyce so, Halberta, no lipstick. No Liz, lipstick, Linda lipstick Arber, free. Arber, lip gloss. Lip gloss, you're like Lorna. That's what I got, like no lipstick, no, no makeup. No makeup. Oh, I really like putting on my makeup in the morning. I don't know. No makeup, but that's great. If you're comfortable that way, that's great. I like a little makeup. Something, I don't know, my mother always used to tell me. Do myself up a bit. Who? Who does? The wooden spoon in Moncton wears her lipstick every day. So that must be her business or her Instagram handle. So this is the rug that we fi that I finished. Ooh. What do you think? So this is the abstract, and what I was doing here. I wish I had some nails there. I can hang it up for you. But what I was doing here was I was, like, using themes that I see on the marsh. So, like, seed pods and the waves and the Bay of Fundy and, and uh, the geese. And I was just sort of abstracting them all and putting them all together. So we don't even have a name in this one. I guess it's, like, Fundy Abstract. Because it's not totally abstract. No, it's not totally abstract. But, they didn't know you but the flying geese are upside down. The pods are in the sky. So things are a bit gone. You know, they're gone a little wild. So I'm liking it. I like it a lot. I'm getting used to it. Sometimes a rug like that, I gotta, like I gotta hang it up and get used to it. Now this rug, I've been thinking a lot about a rug that I did in my sh the show at the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. And if you get here this year, please go um, to the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. Uh, we are going to do a live at some point from the gallery so I can show you the show. But um, I was thinking about that rug, and I did this one. And this one is called Leonard Wakeham's Stage. And Leonard Wakeham was a friend of my father's, and he had um, a store 
which I mean by a store is like a fish shack in, in Newfoundland where he looked out, kept his gear. And uh, so I did, uh, I hooked his stage and then I put the waves. And of course, this is kind of reminiscent of between two places. And I really like the sky in this one. I really like the waves. And of course, you saw a couple of weeks ago, I had the woman uh, between the two I'm going to go get that rug, too, because it's a, a little phase I'm going through. I'll be right back. You guys, show, show everybody around. I'll be right <laughs> She left us alone again, Lorna. Yeah. Oh, I love when she does that. Could you just... Oh, we can... <laughs> She's got her mic on. We can hear her talking out there. Yeah. I love this rug. That abstract one is gorgeous. I just didn't know you could do an abstract and like, because it's kind of both. I, I think that's called that. surrealism, I think, when you have like kind of abstract elements and real elements. What is it called? I think it's surrealism, but oh, uh, yeah, somebody maybe. can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I don't know. Rene Magritte was into surrealism. I know that. So this was another one that I did recently uh, with a woman standing between two places. And I forget what that's called, Angela. I don't know if you remember. I have a hard trouble. Oh. I have trouble with titles. But I'm really interested in how we are between two things and, and, and the landscape. Like, I remember when I was doing that show. So I, I may... If this is for sale on the website, I almost feel like we should take it off because I think I want to hold on to these rugs, right? Um, I feel like... I just want to just take my time and I may have another collection of work here that I that I want to do something oh with. Gosh. What? The lady just said it looks like a bird head on the rug, on the floor. Where? And at first I didn't see it, but when you look in the camera, it, it looks exactly like that. Where? What? If you look like right here. Yeah. Oh, right here? When you stand back, it looks yep. exactly like a bird. Oh. Like a beak. Oh. I never. Oh, it does oh. too. Yeah, I never saw that. I never, but it looked, yeah. I, I, I don't notice it when I look there. But yeah. The camera. So that exactly. came a couple of different ways. Huh. Yeah. I don't know. So what I'm thinking about here is how we lie between two places. And I, I remember when I was doing that other show, I was thinking a lot about. So you're, when you're creating your own designs, you're trying to speak with your own voice, and you're trying to use your own style. Like my style is this what you see it's what I've developed over 30 years but what I'm trying to do is reflect on the idea of how where we grew up and where we live perhaps or uh, where we live and where we love and how oftentimes we're torn between two things or two places and I think if you ever read the artist's statement that I made years ago? I think it was, I think it's some of it is still on the website. That oftentimes, you know, you're being a sister or you're being a friend or you're being a mother. And really, at, you're torn between being a sister and being a wife or you're torn between being a, a wife and being a mother or in a family. Do you know what I mean? Like you're called to do one thing and you're called to do another thing at the same time. So I think that's what this is about and I th and I, I'm thinking a lot too about how uh, like New Brunswick was part of our community uh, for so long and then with COVID now we can't go to New Brunswick and I sort of I sort of see doing this with other other themes in here so I'm going to take that off the website Ange I would like to not sell that right yet I just want to wait on that and we'll just work through this a little bit more so today, I'm going to use the crayon box black, which is sort of blackish brown. Hmm. No, I think I'm going to use dark, dark gray. And I'm going to start outlining these people. Maybe some black, too. What do we got here? I've got this black. Uh -huh. Ali says it reminds her that of you having one foot in Newfoundland and one foot in Nova Scotia. Yeah, it's definitely true. Uh, that's definitely true for me. Uh, but I think, I think it's there are many things that are like 
it's hard to be just one thing, all of us. You know what I mean? Like, and I, that's what this whole series is bringing me to. The idea that we are, each of us, many things. And for the, the, when I first started this series, Allie, you're right. When I did that house that's on the cliffs, um, I have it right here. I'll just get it and show it to you. When I first did this piece, it was definitely that. It was about, uh, like, living here near the fossil cliffs and joggins and, you know, how beautiful it is here and, and missing home. It was definitely that. But I'm really having a good time, like, with the skies in these. So there's three of them now, and the skies are all very different. But I'm also sort of stretching my thoughts and ideas about what, what's... I'm stretching my thoughts and ideas about what's going on with us as individuals and, you know, like uh, about our decision making and how we make decisions. So there's a lot of, um, you know, the way you just said that, how about decision making? Yeah. Did she? Yeah. yeah she I just, just, she said, just, just, and then you said it. Yeah. Yeah. What's her name? Uh, I don't know, but Sharon maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And Sharon, that's true. I think it is about like we, we, we're all, we're constantly, we're constantly drawn to make choices. And one of the things I've noticed in myself since uh, we've been staying at home more and that we have to stay at home, like before, I would feel like I had to do something. I had to go somewhere I, uh, to, you know, maybe I should go somewhere. I should do something. I feel a lot less of that now. So it's just, and that's because of COVID. Like these, there's no way that these these 16 months won't impact us or change the way we think about things. I, I think it's, I mean, it's going to. Has it with you guys? Lorna? I guess so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you, Angela? Um, I miss seeing friends. Yeah. You know, but I'm kind of, I live in the woods. <laughs> you do. And so not much of my life has really changed yeah no it's true you are very you you're a homebody you are a homebody yeah, we're home yeah. i wouldn't call you an introvert but you are essentially i suppose aren't you a little bit yeah 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 so i'm outlining this woman now and i'm choosing the dark gray i think the crayon box would be good too except for there was a little bit too much brown in it for what i wanted so um I don't know if I'm doing it right by outlining with, with two of these or not. Like I'm using two strands. I love this sort of gunmetal dark gray color. And you could use cloth too if you wanted. A gunmetal cloth would be great if you had an old gray skirt. I was thinking this morning about how much recycled cloth we used to use and how now you can't find it anywhere. It's just not available. Okay, so I'm going to, so now when you look here, there are so many details. So this pattern I just want to show you is from our pattern book, okay? So what I did, this is our Create Beauty Every Day pattern book, and it's volume one. So we used to have Pattern of the Month Club. We're not doing that anymore. So I took this design and I enlarged it. I think I'm going to eliminate the teacup out of it. Um, I know it sort of symbolizes the kitchen, but i uh, I'm just going to, I don't like it in there. I'm going to take that out when I hook it. So what I did was I enlarged it. And you can see right in here, there's so many things. Like there's polka dots on her shirt. There's a collar. There's a double line around her. So what I'm going to do is for the bigger parts of this rug, like the bigger parts, like her arms or hips or bust. Um, sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean to offend you, but anyway. I just a little woman here calling her heavy set. She's just big boned. There we go. But I'm going to use a double outline. But on the smaller parts, like where I want to show the detail, I'm just going to use a single outline. Okay? So I'm going to just show you a little bit of outlining today, and that's, and then I'm going to get on to tracing 
uh, pattern so that you can understand it. So this, this is very important because to, to go to the single line here because I want to show the detail. Like I want to show that detail right over here of her, her apron that it has like probably a line of red or something around it. I don't know what color it's going to be. So maybe she has a red and white polka dot top because I have a red and white polka dot top. So maybe I'll give her that. And, and then we'll put her arms in and maybe we'll put like gold floral here or whatever. We're not sure. But all of these big pieces will be outlined in double lines and the small pieces will be outlined in single lines. And you want to get in and you want to really show like the little lines like on her collar. And I'm going to hook that quite tightly and closely together. So did people open the Tuesday newsletter and get the beautiful gift that Dave Gunning gave us all of his music? I hope you did. I hope you got to see that. If you didn't, it's on YouTube. Dave Gunning is a local singer-songwriter, and he's, well, he's known all over North America, but he lives here in Pictou County, and uh, he and his wife and uh, three children, and I uh, have always loved this song called These Hands because it talks about how we should use our hands the way we want them, the way we want to. And, and I remember years ago... I remember years ago being in a workshop and telling people, people were saying, well, my teacher told me to do this, and my teacher told me to do that, and my teacher told me to do that. And I used to say, these are your hands, you know, don't let anybody tell you how to use them. You have to find out how to use them. And Dave Gunning did that, like he, he pulled that together so well in, in the song, These Hands, about how, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful, uh, thoughtful uh, conversation about how we should use our hands as human beings. And this is how I've chosen to use my hands, uh, is to make rugs. And I, I have chosen to do that um, to create beauty every day. I mean, that is, that, uh, you know, someone said to me the other day, are you tired of hearing it? And I said, no, I'm tired of sometimes using it on things, or, but I'll never get tired of hearing it. I don't think so. And I'll never get tired of thinking of it. And I hope... God willing, I never get tired of doing it because uh, that's what we were given our hands, us, those of us, I'm on to the other woman now, um, those of us who uh, have chosen craft and art as part of our lives is we have this beautiful gift. And, uh, you know, I think of... When I look at that song, I think of how other people have chosen to use their hands and how, uh, you know, they've, you know, he says some hands have fought wars and some hands saved lives. And makes you, when you look, listen to that, it makes you feel like, geez, maybe I'm not doing enough. Um, but, you know, I, you, you do what you do and you do what you can do. And, uh, and, you you know you can't use your hands like somebody else somebody else's use theirs. Um, I you know think of I think of my cousin and how much I love him and how he uses his hands to sit you know he he how he uses his hands and I think of my mother's hands. We all think of our mother's hands, and uh, as we mature, sometimes we can look at our own hands and see our mother's hands. We know. Uh, we know a lot about people from looking at their hands, right? It's a, it's a. Bonnie Moore says thing. that she used to read his book, These Hands. Yes, he. That's something that's important. If you go to, I believe, if you go to Dave's web, website, DaveGunning.com, uh, you can purchase his book, or he'll tell you where you can purchase it. And it's called These Hands, and it's a beautiful, beautiful children's story, an illustrated children's story that you can get uh, for a grandchild or a child. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful book. So what I'm saying is take the time to do the details. 
So like in this one here, I'm going to make sure that on, on a, with a single strand of yarn, I'm going to get that detail, which is the frill on her apron, okay? And this is from our pattern book, Create Beauty Every Day. If you haven't got it yet, you should order yours. We have been shipping them all over North America. And we do ship internationally now. It's expensive for us to ship internationally, so it costs a lot if you want us to ship something to England or, you know, wherever. But we can, we can or Australia, but we can do it. Look at that. That's coming out really nice. I was just asking, like, how you fill in the small details. That's, so what, I'm going to fill in the small details by using smaller cuts of wool, for sure, definitely. And uh, by, by using smaller cuts of wool. And uh, so even sometimes if I have a number eight cut in cloth, I'll cut it in half when I'm doing a small detail. And just hooking a little bit finer, going a little, you know, you're going a little slower. So this is started. I'm going to have this all outlined by next week, and we'll start, you know, who knows where I'll be next week. It's possible it could be done next week, but it's not very likely because I've got a rug on at home too, and it's a good size. Um, I'm getting ready for next year and planning some, some things. So I'll come on out, and I'm going to show you about this. So I want to show you how to transfer a pattern. Do we have still have lots of time left? Are we good? Oh, great. Okay. So we printed off. This is for our kitchen flowers. So this is this. This is inspired by this design. So we're doing a series of Wednesday workshops. The, the next one is in June, June 30th, I think. It's a, it's a Wednesday workshop. It's in the afternoon from 1 until 3, Atlantic time. And so it's a live workshop. So if you want to register for that, we're doing a version of this, of this design. Okay. So... Basically, you get a downloadable pattern that you print off, and it comes in two pieces like this. And it has a dotted line, and you just fold it on the dotted line right here like this. And then you put it together like a puzzle. There we go. And you can just tape it. Okay, now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of wedding tool, or you could use red dot tracer if you want it. We have both on our website. Angela, did, were you able to find the red dot tracer and put it in the right spot? Or yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's in the right spot. First, you couldn't find it on there. Um, so this is the pattern that we're going to do. It's called kitchen flowers. So I'm just taking my Sharpie marker, and I'm following the lines. Now you could also, if you wanted to, you could just take the design and freehand it and draw it again. But a lot of people struggle with drawing at first until they get practiced. Once you practice, drawing, drawing is not um, a talent so much as it is a skill. Uh, I mean, there are some people who are very talented drawers, of course. My cousin that I was talking about being one of them, he has great detail. Donnie Fitz with his drawing. Um, but lots of us just, you know, we're, I have a limited capacity to draw, but I practice it and I just try to make it better. And, and also you come to your own style by practicing. So happy that you come out on Wednesdays. Do we have lots of people, Angela, today? We do. Do you have lots of people too, Lorne? You got some people? Yeah. Great. We get lots of people on Instagram through the week watching. And it's because you share, you guys, on uh, Facebook. Those of you who share, I just want to give an extra special shout out to the sharers. Because you never know what you're sharing when you're sharing rug hooking. People might need community. They might need friendship. They might need uh, solace, support. They might need meditation, you know. So now I've traced that pattern very simply. And now I've got a piece of linen, and I'm just going to lay this on my linen. And then I'm just going to trace it again. 
So pretty simple, really, isn't it? Oh. So this is for our Wednesday workshop. So I'm tracing this for myself right now because on Wednesday, June 30th, I'm going to hook this design with you in my studio. And I'm excited to do that. We have a series of Wednesday workshops, and I encourage you to register. I know you, I know it's hard in June, but that's why we're not doing them in the summer. We're not doing them in July and August. But it's only for a couple hours, and that those Zoom classes go by really fast. So I've got this all, I'm getting this all prepared for myself. And that's how you do it. That's how you prepare your pattern or trace your pattern. You're using wedding tool. There are other methods. You know, you can use light tables or... Debbie says she uses tape to tape it down so it yeah, doesn't move. Yeah, you can T-pin it if you want or use tape to tape it down. Yeah, for sure. So there is my kitchen flowers. I've uh, got another leaf there. Oh, that's there. cute. Teresa Vogel. Henry is only two, and he is mesmerized watching Deanne Trace. Oh, <laughs> it's fun, Henry. You should try it, Henry. Yeah. Try it. I used to love to trace when I was a kid. I used to love to, like, like when I was coloring, I would outline the oh, coloring yeah, book. The marker. Did, in marker, yeah. And then you colored it in crayon. Oh, I never did. Oh, oh you no, that's the best. Oh, you did it, outlined it all in marker yeah. and then colored it in crayon. Cool. Okay. No, I never did that. I used to just press hard on the crayon on the outside. So you can be creative. I, I love coloring. I, but I haven't <laughs> colored a long time, but I do like coloring. So then I'm going to uh, just take this and I'm going to put my edges on. So will the Wednesday workshops be available after, uh, so you, they can refer back to you them? You can refer back to them, yeah. Once it's once the workshop's done, it's done, but you will get, uh, if you register, you will. we're going to tape it for you and send it to you. Yeah, for sure. So this I'm going to tape, and now once you get it on there, you can change your, you can change your shapes of your leaves a little bit if you want, right? So I'm going to do that. But anyway, it's ready to go. So that's for my Wednesday workshop. And I'll, hook, I'll be able to get most of that done with you there. So did anyone see the little blue boxes on my desk? This is the fun part of the, the day. And did anyone notice my hand today when I was hooking? Did you notice anything different about my hand? Did anyone notice anything? Anyone notice? Anyone notice anything? No. Mm -hmm. Nobody's noticed anything. Remember I told you I had a nice little surprise? Well, does anyone wonder what's in the little blue boxes? I don't think there's anything in them. What? I, I don't think there's anything in those. I think I took them all out. <laughs> Sorry. No, there's something in oh, them. Is there? No, no, there's something in oh, them. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Does anyone know what's in these little blue boxes? Anyone have any idea? It's a little blue yeah. box from Deanne Fitzpatrick Studio, and you're going to want one. It's not an expensive thing. Oh, Wanda Elliott. Ah, she sees it? Yep. Want to zone in? It's the Create Beauty Everyday Ring. It's handcrafted in Pugwash, Nova Scotia by Bonnie and John, who run Basic Spirits, and 10% of all the profits fund charitable projects. So um, I talked to Bonnie and John, and they created this ring for me. So there's the font. And so I have one on my hand right now. And I'm wearing a size um, 8, because I have big hands. Um, and we have size 6, 7, 8, and we have 9. Um, so, uh, probably a six would fit you, Angela, yep. I would say. Yeah, you're wearing a six. Yep. And so that's our Create Beauty Everyday Ring. So if you want one, uh, you can order them online. Um, I'm going to show you over here what Kaylee did with hers. She put hers on a chain. So we have it on a, you can pop it on a silver chain. And that's what I may do with mine, too, sometimes. And you can do both, right? You can wear it. And then she put it on a gold chain. So we had the silver and gold mixed. And I think both of them look really nice right there. And so that's our story today. 
uh, is the Create Beauty Everyday Ring. I'm really happy with it, and uh, I think it's a great. I think it's a great reminder to like when you're uh, you know doing something to just have that on your hand and just to remind you that using your hands and spending time to make is time well spent. It's great. Like it's you know so you have that there, and you're just and even when you're hooking just to. You know, have a peek at that while you're hooking, and it'll just tell you that you're doing the thing that's right for you in that moment. You know, 10 minutes a day, we'll talk about it in a couple of weeks, we'll talk about our 10, minute, 10 minutes a day challenge, too. Um, and I think uh, we'll do that again this summer. But, it, you know, it doesn't take much. If you spent 10 minutes every day, well, the truth is, if you spend 10 minutes every day before you know it, you're spending, yeah, she's a little, there we go. If you spend 10 minutes every day, before you know it, you're spending half an hour, an hour, so this is our Create Beauty Everyday Ring. What's everybody think about these? Anybody saying anything? Oh, they love them. You like them? Yep. Great. What sizes do they come in, Dan? Uh, size 6, 7, 8, and 9. Those are, there's four sizes. So you, I was going to wear mine on my pinky at first, but I, I pushed it down on my hand. So it's a little bit tight, but I have big hands. So, Lorna, what size would you be wearing? You're probably a seven, aren't you? Actually, I, the six was too big. The six was too big. Oh, so you'd have to wear that on your middle finger if you wanted to wear it. Yeah. yeah she has delicate little hands. I do. Hard she has believe, I know. delicate little hands, that Lorna. <laughs> so this is our story for today. I'm going to keep working on this rug. I finished two rugs. There was a lot today. There's a lot. Oh, so today, oh, this is what we did. We talked about outlining hooked rugs. We talked... Um, a bit about uh, the two rugs that I completed. We talked a lot about the series that I'm going to want to create um, or, or that I'm sort of working through uh, about being divided and how as human beings we're often divided between two things. I mean, that's who we, we have. We're multiple people, right, in one person. Um, and uh, we talked about how to transfer a pattern. We talked about the Wednesday workshops and how I hope you'll come. There's still room left in it, and uh, we want you to come to the Wednesday workshop on June 20th. It's a two-and-a-half-hour workshop. It's $59, and that includes the pattern, which you, you will download and trace. There is a kit available for it if you want, but you don't need to buy the kit. You can just use your own stuff if you want. June 30th. June 30th. Thank you. June 30th. They're all on Wednesdays. There's the last Wednesday in June. We have one in June. We have one in September. We have one in October. We have one in November. And from there, we'll decide. So that's it, folks. I'm happy you were with me today. I'm always happy you're with me. You make me, you make me happy. I'm so grateful. And, and we're going to be doing some new things on our newsletter list. So be sure you join because um, we decided that we love the people uh, who um, you know, we want to really share some love on that newsletter list, didn't we, Angela? Mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to be doing some things that really share some love, and you want to be joining so that you can get um, a beautiful offering that we're going to offer you for the summer that uh, is completely free for you. And uh, also you'll know about all of our events and notices and organizations, but we're going to be doing some really fun things there over the next year. We're just going to treat that newsletter list like you, the people who join my newsletter list, you are the people who keep our business rolling and going, and you're the people who support us so much, and the people who show up for our Facebook Lives. You know, you are the people who support us so much. And, and so join that newsletter list and, uh, and our Instagram Lives, too. Thank you. And uh, we just want to share some good stuff with you guys. Good stuff. For free. Kind of fun. Nice. I like gifts. Do you like gifts, Angela? I do. Yeah. Do you like gifts, Lorna? I do, but not as much as you. <laughs> <laughs> I just find them fun. I like giving they them. Are. Yeah, I do. I love giving yeah. gifts. I love giving gifts. It's yeah. fun. So you got, so get that in your head that we're going to be doing some gifty things and having a lot of fun. And get your Create Beauty Everyday Ring. Oh, they're twenty four ninety five. Did I tell you the price? I think that's a great deal. And they're pewter. They're made out of pewter. And I don't think this one's ever coming off my finger. <laughs> but anyway, that's okay. Who needs it off? And we're, they're under gifts on the website. They're under gifts on the website, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So thanks a lot for joining me this week. It's Thursday Live. Deanne Fitzpatrick. Studio. I say Deanne Fitzpatrick, but there's so much more than Deanne Fitzpatrick here. It's all these beautiful people I work with that do so much. So take care. See ya.